The predator-prey model that we just looked at is, of course, not the only population dynamics model that is out there. Let's spend some time looking at a really good model of two species that, instead of predation prey, are in competition with one another. This is going to be a continuous time competitive model. This too is due to Lotka and Volterra. So don't go around saying the Lotka Volterra model because people won't know which one that is. This again is a two species model. The first species X has the following dynamics. DX equals X times quantity one minus X minus alpha times Y. The second species, y, has the following dynamics. dy equals r times y times quantity 1 minus y minus beta times x. This is kind of similar to the predator-prey model, but it's a little bit different. These species are in competition. So think of x as being, I don't know, like humans, and y as being evil killer robots. And these two populations are in competition and we want to track the sizes. Now we've got a couple of constants here. Let's make sense of those. That R is just like before a reproduction ratio. That's going to be a positive constant. You can see if you dig into this model that if you just look at the first two terms, what you're really getting is a logistic equation where the carrying capacity is normalized to be one. But then there's also this extra term. In the first equation, it's minus alpha x times y. In the second equation, it's minus beta r times x times y. And as we saw with predator-prey, that's a competition model. That's, that's pulling back the growth rate of populations based on interaction. That is, humans and robots don't get along. Now again, just to repeat, alpha, beta, r, these are all positive constants. X and Y are the two population sizes we also need for those to be non-negative as well. Let's continue the old story. The first thing we're going to do is look for equilibria. If we take DX, that is X times quantity one minus X minus alpha Y, set that equal to zero, the two solutions are X equals zero or X equals one minus alpha times Y. Doing the same thing with the dynamics for Y, gives us, again, two solutions, y equals zero or y equals one minus beta times x. Now, again, we have two possible clauses with an and in between them. There are four possibilities for this. There are four equilibria in this system. The first one is obviously at zero comma zero. What that means is everybody's dead. The second equilibrium x equals 1, y equals 0. That corresponds to humans being at full population size, robots being wiped out. The third and symmetric equilibrium to that is 0, 1. The robots have won, the humans have lost. And the fourth, the most interesting equilibrium, occurs at x equals 1 minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha times beta, and y equals 1 minus beta over one minus alpha times beta. That takes a little bit of algebra that I'm gonna let you do. Next up is computing the derivative. If we write out the right-hand side of the dynamics, distributing that multiplication, we get x minus x squared minus alpha xy. And then the second output is r times y minus ry squared minus r times beta times x times y. Let's compute the partial derivatives. The partials with respect to x are first, 1 minus 2x minus alpha times y, second, minus r times beta times y. The second column of the derivative matrix is the partials with respect to y, that is minus alpha times x, then r minus 2ry minus r times beta times x. Now you're going to want to remember this derivative because we've got a little bit of work to do in order to classify those equilibria. Let's start with the origin. If we take that derivative that we computed, evaluate at x equals 0 and y equals 0, then the matrix we get has entries 1, 0, 0, and r. 
This is a diagonal matrix. We can see what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are clearly. This means that the origin is always a source. Now let's interpret that. What this means is that when competition is low, when the population sizes of both teams is low, there's plenty of growth for everybody. Everybody's just going to be increasing in size. Whether we're talking about humans and robots, or whether we're talking about two startups working in the same space. At the second equilibrium, at 1, 0, if we take the derivative that we computed, evaluate at x equals 1, y equals 0, then we get the matrix whose rows are negative 1, negative alpha, 0, and r times quantity 1 minus beta. Now this is an upper triangular matrix. That means that we can read off the eigenvalues directly. We can see that one of them is negative one and the other might be positive or it might be negative depending on beta. Here's where it starts getting interesting. If beta is less than one, then that second eigenvalue is positive and that means we have a saddle point. That is kind of bad news for humans. It means that you've got a direction of stability along the x-axis because one zero is an eigenvector for this negative eigenvalue, but then you've got this positive eigenvalue that shoots you away. That means if there are any robots at all, that this equilibrium where the humans have won, it, it, it goes away. You move away from that equilibrium. On the other hand, if beta is bigger than one, then that means you've got two negative eigenvalues, that means you have a sink. That means that humans always win no matter what. The robot population dies out, at least local to this equilibrium. The situation at the third equilibrium at 0, 1 is perfectly analogous. Evaluating the derivative there gives us the matrix 1 minus alpha, 0, negative r times beta, negative r. This again is a triangular matrix. We can see that the eigenvalues are 1 minus alpha and negative r. One of those is definitely negative. The other depends on alpha. If alpha is less than 1, then what we have is a saddle point, and that is bad news for the robots who like this equilibrium. If alpha is bigger than 1, we have two negative eigenvalues, and we have a sink, where again, robots win locally. That's a pretty good start to our story, but we've got a little bit of work left to do.